good to see you all. Where are my slides? Come on. Whoa, hang on. All right. Uh, howdy. Um, so my name's Ba, and uh, I am here to talk about the evolution of communication, uh, which is a really broad topic, and I only have like 15 minutes. So I'm going to narrow it down uh, by starting with a, a personal experience. Um, so I, I grew up obsessed with making comics and cartoons. And uh, right after high school, I, I wound up spending 12 years uh, trying to make this one completely insane cartoon uh, that was called Griddleville. Uh, it was kind of like a combination of, uh, of like Looney Tunes meets The Prisoner. Um, and I tried all these different ways of making it. I tried making it a TV show. I tried animating it by myself, which I do not recommend. Uh, and then finally I was trying to make it into a comic strip. And so I was sitting down to make this comic strip and I'd been working on this for so long and I was looking at the first panel for like two weeks and I was totally blocked. Uh, so to get past that, I decided to try an experiment. And so the experiment was, I told myself for one month, every day, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna sketch out 10 comic strips, 10 eight panel comics, so 80 panels, uh, and I'm gonna do this as fast as I can without stopping or thinking, and I'm gonna make 10 comics that are total garbage that I'm gonna throw in the trash and never show anybody. And hopefully doing this is gonna like, get the creative engine going and we'll see what happens. So I started the experiment, um, and within, like I said, about week two, I was starting to really have fun with it, and I started actually liking the comics I was making. And I also started really thinking about what I was doing and thinking about uh, what it was like to like, write these comics so quickly and how comics and cartoon uh, is actually really an amazing language uh, into, in itself. Um, and if you think about cartoon as a language, it has all these dimensions that go beyond just the written word that actually add uh, layers and layers of really rich meaning. So for example, I'll illustrate. Um, one of the ingredients, obviously, text. We all know about text. Uh, but then you add to that symbols. Uh, for example, word balloon shows us that someone is saying this. And then if you add, that, add to that uh, facial expression, uh, that actually can drastically change the meaning of the text that's being said. Uh, and then you add to that body language, and that changes the meaning even more. And on top of that, you add more illustration, and you can add uh, you know, backgrounds and composition, and this creates context, which changes it even more. And on top of that, obviously, you're going to want to add colors, and that can change the whole meaning of the whole thing uh, in, in pretty interesting ways. So it's a really rich, deep visual language, and playing with it made me wonder, uh, why can't everyone talk this way? And, and what if they could? Um, what kind of world would that be? Maybe it would be more fun, uh, but obviously not everyone uh, can draw or will have the patience to draw. So I started this company to help that happen, uh, which was Bitstrips. Um, and so the basic idea was, what if we can reinvent comics as a new form of mass communication that is accessible to everybody? And what will that do to the world? Um, so we made this website, uh, but this was 2008. So the world was not exactly quite ready for it. Um, Meanwhile, through all of human history, there it is, uh, whoa, uh, we've had all these technological communication revolutions that have completely changed the fabric of society as we know it. Uh, and they've really, like, all these revolutions have, have made communication more and more convenient uh, in transformative ways, but, and they've brought us closer together, uh, but at the same time, in other ways, they've actually pushed us further apart. 
um, and I'll explain. So this is what communication looked like for like 99% of, of human history. Uh, it's face to face, uh, which you could argue is the best form of communication. It's the most human, certainly, uh, but it's not necessarily the most convenient when you live in a world with space and distance. You have to be in the same place at the same time, uh, which isn't that easy. So here's my chart, and it's like, you know, face to face, very human, not terribly convenient. Um, now, from there, we had many revolutions. We had cave paintings, hieroglyphics, the alphabet, the printing press. I'm going to skip all the way ahead to modern technology, uh, starting with the phone, which is a really magical invention because it let us talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime. It's amazing. Uh, but you have the person's voice, but not their face. So a really important dimension of information has been stripped away. Uh, so the phone is a lot more convenient, but also significantly less human. Um, so fast forward even further, and now we have texting. And this is a game changer because it's made our communication asynchronous. We can have a whole conversation while doing all kinds of other things. We don't have to be in the same place at the same time. We don't have to be talking at the same time. Uh, so this is really incredible. Uh, but we've now not only, and this is also how, it's so incredible that this is how everybody in the world is talking now. It's become the predominant form of communication. But not only have we lost your face, we've also lost your voice, uh, which is obviously by this picture a little creepy. Uh, but if you think about like text as a voice, even though it has no sound, it's kind of like a robot. Um, so, you know, maybe it's making us into robots. So, you know, way more convenient, but less human than ever, which is a big problem if this is how everyone is communicating all the time. So, because of that, we invented the emoticon. Uh, this actually came about uh, in the 80s. Uh, it started on engineering message boards at Carnegie Mellon University, um, where the engineers needed a way to tell whether they were joking or not. Uh, this is an example of an engineering joke. Uh, and it, emoticons were really cool because they added tone, and they added this nuance that wasn't there before. Um, so this actually added even more convenience and also started to make it a little, a little tiny bit more human. Um, but humans are not just smiles and frowns. There's a much wider range. And we needed more. So along came emoji. Uh, and emoji is amazing because it gives us this much wider range of, of uh, expressions, gestures, images. Um, it's also a very interesting example of we've gone from talking with symbols, i.e. letters, into icons, i.e. something that depicts something. And this is actually the first step that our like, digital communication has taken into cartoon language, uh, which is pretty exciting to me. Um, and whoa, so it's m even more convenient. It's like a new form of punctuation, word replacement, uh, and maybe even a little more human. So this was like where you could kind of see the tide starting to turn. And from there, it went even further because we started to get stickers. And this became possible as we had more and more mechanisms to chat and more and more apps that could build in other media that we could use. And now stickers were actually a big step beyond emoji into pretty much full-on cartoon language. The stickers are like a complete statement, and they're using all of those elements. They're using facial expression, body language, text, composition, color. We're basically now talking in cartoons. So this is probably more convenient than ever because you can say an entire statement with one picture, but it's not really any more human. And as convenient and, and appealing as it is, 
there's something really important that is still missing from this, uh, which is you. You. Uh, if you think about it, identity has always been like a fundamental aspect of communication, going back to those cavemen guys. like. The same statement coming out of two different people's mouths can have a totally different meaning. Uh, however, if you look at two text conversations, no matter how many emojis and stickers they use, they're, they're indistinguishable from one another. Uh, so this is a problem. And you know, Apple tried to solve it. They gave us five colors of emojis, but that doesn't really help. So meanwhile, while all this was happening, uh, we were still working on evolving bit strips. And we'd gone from website to mobile app. And as we were doing that, we, we started to realize that it wasn't just about this cartoon language, but it was really about the avatar. That if you made an avatar for someone, the avatar itself would become the medium of expression, which is like it is in real life. And not only that, but when your friend sees your avatar, they actually see you, which is kind of, it's actually magic. It's metaphysical, and it's really powerful. Now, if you take the concept of the avatar and you combine that with the language of cartoon, and you combine that with technological mechanisms that make it easier to share this kind of media, and you combine that with a culture that has become ready to talk in cartoons, you get Bitmoji. Uh, and if you haven't tried it, Bitmoji basically turns you into a cartoon and makes you your own emoji and gives you these, these really fun stickers so that you can say whatever you want to say really quickly. And in some ways, cartoons are so expressive that it lets you express yourself in, in ways that are maybe even better than you can in real life. So I think that at this point, we're actually starting to get more human than we've been in a really long time, which is, which is really exciting. Um, and as a fan of cartoons, it's really fun to, to see everyone start to play with this language. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, uh, what's next? And this, everything I've just described through this cartoon lens is kind of one tangent. Meanwhile, there's all these other tangents happening at the same time, which are really interesting. And for example, uh, in recent years, uh, people are starting to communicate by sharing experiences uh, with photos and videos. And if you take that path and you combine that with avatar-powered cartoon language, you start getting all kinds of crazy hybrids and spawning all kinds of interesting and exciting new directions. So things are getting more convenient than they've ever been. Things are getting more human than they've ever been, and maybe we're going to a place where it's going to be more human than human, maybe. Um, and so I want to end on like this question of like, is, is the technology of communication going to evolve in further directions in ways that we can't possibly imagine that are going to transform civilization as we know it, and change the whole species into something we might not even recognize? Um, the answer, obviously, is yes, uh, because it has already happened. That's it. Thank you.